Huge day of racing at Saratoga this Saturday. Obviously, the Travers is the headliner, but there are plenty of other grade one events and stars on the card, including the $750,000 grade one sword dancer conducted at a mile and a half over Saratoga's inner turf. I'm joined with by James Scully, who's live at Saratoga. I think, James, it's safe to say you're not going to just show up for the Travers. You're going to go for the undercard grade one races, right? You know it, Scott. I'm a, you know, I'm a big stace guy, so I'm excited for the entire card. You know, we open up with a good maiden race, but uh, we're here to talk about the sword dancer. You're right, though. Great card from start to finish. Of course, you're going to want to get involved on Twin Spires early and often where the bet back promotion continues on. So a couple of the eligible races on the card include the Travers and the sword dancer, which we're going to get into right now, James. Mile and a half over the inner turf. How do you see the race shape playing out? Well, you know, Trud Huben is the speed in here. He led wire to wire in that Manhattan and really floated him on the backstretch. I thought that day got out by almost 10 lengths and looked like that the real key to that trip was channel maker flubbed the start. He didn't break. He came back last time in that Grand Couture and was setting the pace in that race. I think he's going to break. He won't be in front of Trud Huben, but he's going to keep him company. Yeah, I agree. I don't see Tribe Uvin loose and lonely on the lead. I mean, he might run off again, which uh, he has done in the past, but it won't be an easy lead that he'll be setting. You also have the likes of long shot, cold, hard cash. who might not be fast enough, but really does not have a lot of options. You would think he would be up and on the pace. Well, you got Tribe Uvin getting pressed. So my assumption is you're not going with a speed horse in here. Who is it that you like? I wound up landing on number one at Hamo, and he's a horse to me that he really got a good draw in the rail. You know, he drew on the inside last time. The thing with that Hamo, uh, Scott, he's a four-year-old colt, got imported from France. Uh, I thought his first three starts, the Fairgrounds uh, Stakes, the uh, uh, Old Porce or Turf Classic in the Manhattan, just didn't get the right trip. Circumstances conspired against him. He really put it all together last time in that UN. I really liked his turn of foot that day. Granted, it's going to be his first start at a mile and a half on Saturday, but I do think he's a horse that's, in a sense, progressing, uh, still has more to offer for Chad Brown, and I look for him to run a big race in the Sword Dancer. Ed Hamo certainly did appear to put it all together in the United Nations. Got a pretty good trip that day under a pretty good rider over the side, and Flavian Pratt will be on him again. I think he's the second likeliest winner. Maybe you could even say the likeliest winner, and I'm going to keep my eyes on the tote board in this one to see uh, if my top pick, number three, Broom, gets bet down to favoritism, is three to one on the morning line. I just think he's the clear class of the field. We've seen a lot of these uh, other runners that are stateside uh, throughout the year, you know, clash with each other. Some are better than others. I do agree at Hamo has a little more upside than some of the other ones in here that we can go through it uh, quickly in a moment. But Broom has proven form in the States. He ran a real big second where he was wide or maybe would have won the Breeders' Cup turf back at Del Mar November 6th. And then his effort in the uh, grade two Hardwick at Ascot was in front running fashion where Ryan Moore really uh, put on one of his many, many great rides in his career. Last time out, forgivable effort in the uh, grade one event at Ascot. That was, you know, against the best of the best in the land. Uh, to me, if Broom runs back to that effort at Del Mar or even the effort at Ascot on June 18th, he's going to be tough to beat. But interestingly enough, James, Aiden O'Brien's never won a race at Saratoga. Did you know that? I did not know that, Scott. I know he shipped over some horses previously for the sword dancer. Uh, but I just thought he might have, you know, I know Joseph, his son, has, has won races there. Um uh, you know, that's a good pick with Broom. I'll tell you, last year, I think he was more of a dedicated closer. You can see it in that Breeders' Cup turf. You know, he's like 10th going down the back stretch, 10 lengths out of it. I thought in the Hardwick and in the King uh, George and Queen Elizabeth stakes, he showed some decent tactical foot. And that could really serve him well because he doesn't want to get too far back, I think, in the early stages. Encouraging sign to see Ryan Moore, and I definitely respect uh, Broom. Let's say the pace is highly contentious. Broom and Ed Hamo, who we both give big chances to. We picked one, you picked, I picked one, you picked the other. Both of them make moves, but no, that's not the last move. Who would be the likeliest to come from the clouds and run this field down? Well, I just think Gufo is your most likely candidate. You know, he's such a one-run dedicated closer. And, and to me, the thing was, was that coming into his five-year-old season, I thought he had more potential to move forward this year. I loved his first race to Pan American. He moved earlier in that race, Scott. The last three, he's just left himself too much to do. I can excuse the one, one of them, but I didn't like his effort last time. A little bit worried about Gufo. 
Me too. His last three efforts have been nowhere near as good as his previous ones. He had run almost consec- seven consecutive, six of seven triple digit Brisnet speed ratings and hasn't gotten back to a triple digit effort over his last three. And the additional blinkers for a grade one event, I know he's always running in grade one events, but I don't like the equipment change before a race like this. I'm going to be willing to let Gufo beat me at nine to two. I thought Rock Emperor at eight to one was maybe a little bit interesting. This horse has always kind of felt like a second tier Chad Brown horse, but he has a win over the Saratoga surface this summer in the Bowling Green. Did get a favorable race shape that day. But to me, I think this is at Hamo and Broom and, and, and the horizontals and probably move on, assuming one of them will get the right trip. Are you going to just key in on at Hamo in terms of, you know, the pick five horizontals or uh, how, how are you going to approach those? Yeah, well, no, I mean, it's in terms of the horizontals, uh, uh, horizontals, I, I might throw some others. I'm not that like um, uh, I'm not uh, leveraging my position on not homo and those. I will mention a horse of the vertical exotic soldier rising huge class check for him, Scott. But his form is improving for Clement triple digit late pace numbers in his last two. So if you're looking a bomber for your tries or supers, uh, he might be one to use. 15 to one. Well, hopefully James Soldier Rising can pick up some pieces. You'll wait in a less than long line to collect your ticket because we know we like everybody to win, but the longer the line, the less the payout usually is. But either way, I hope you have a tremendous time at Travers Day. It should be a lot of fun. I know you're out there with your wife, taking her out there for the first time. Lots of friends and colleagues on hand. Should be an awesome day. Remember to get involved the Twin Spires, the Bet Back Promotion, for Travers, as well as a sword dancer. Remember to opt into that promotion, as I mentioned earlier on. And best of luck in upstate New York.